On April 30th, two of MMA's greatest jiu-jitsu fighters will compete at who's number one. The American legend Rafael Lovato Jr. will take on the Iron Man of combat sports, Gilbert Dorinho Burns. As both fighters have continuously remained active in both grappling and MMA throughout the years, this match is not just another gimmick MMA grappling contest, but one that has the potential of showing us what high-level ground skills look like at the highest level of combat sports. With no points and no limitations on submissions, we have the potential of seeing some very high-level jiu-jitsu play out. But how will this match go down? What will happen and who will win? Well, let's take a closer look at this match and analyze these questions, shall we? Now, there are several elements to help us evaluate and use for analysis for big grappling matches, but I'm gonna break it down to these five. Experience, technical abilities, tactical strategies, size, and activity. So first, experience. Both Rafael and Gilbert are BGG world champions in the gi and without. Both have fought and won in multiple rule sets, such as points, sub only, and ADCC. So neither of them have what we refer to as inexperience in adapting to rule sets. However, when we speak about grappling at a high level, Lovato does edge out Gilbert here a bit, as he started his black belt career in and around 2005, whereas Gilbert began in 2009. So slight edge to Lovato for experience, especially with similar rule sets. Now, as far as technical abilities, both have shown diversity and proficiency in all realms of grappling, such as takedowns, passing, guard sweeping or submissions, submission offense and defense and more. Both will wrestle from the feet, expect to see Lovato with those hard collar ties and slide by attempts, whereas Gilbert might look for those single leg pickups as Lovato's height will be a factor. If Gilbert can get Lovato down, expect to see that fast paced passing and back taking style that has made him such a success in all three realms. And if Lovato finds himself on top, we can expect to see the pressure passing timeless jujitsu with a more of a progressive direction from passing side or mount and back. I don't feel like we will see submissions from either being hit from their backs, but either guillotine choke attempts off of shots or rear naked choke attempts from the back position feels like they're in the cards. As both fighters have amazing camps and support systems in place, Gilbert has already mentioned that he is ready for Lovato's Kimura attempts and his counters planned. So this is definitely going to be interesting to see it play out. So many questions. And with no points, will one of them just pull guard and play from the bottom, or will they try to insist on optimal controlling positions? When specifically looking at the submission ratios of both athletes, Lovato does have a higher percentage average here which in a submission-based rule set such as who's number one, gives him a slight advantage. However, Gilbert is someone who has not only demonstrated the highest levels of technical proficiency, but he's also one of the sport's innovators as he is recognized as being one of the persons for popularizing some of what we call today as modern jiu-jitsu. So as far as technical level for this rule set, I feel like this is even. As far as the tactical, this is where Gilbert stands to shine as he has demonstrated over the years the ability to draw fighters in, frustrate them, and be able to outscore them using his physical attributes at the right time of the match. I can see Gilbert using his explosiveness, which he is known for, just at the right moments of the match to win the favor of the judges. Whereas Raphael takes more of a progressive structured pace, so slight edge and tactical advantage for Gilbert Burns here. Now, they say in Jiu Jitsu, size cannot always be a deciding factor. But with both fighters' skill levels are this high, size will absolutely help either one. Especially since this match is at a catch weight. Lovato will definitely have the advantage of natural size being taller and heavier than Gilbert. But if he is not careful, the size could play against him if Gilbert can put on the pressure that he is known to do. As that is a relatively unknown factor, on paper, Lovato edges this one out with the size advantage. Now, activity can always play a factor in matches. As more often than not, we see some competitors show their ring rust or mat rust, if you will, after having not competed in grappling or any combat related sports for a long period of time. Most competitors at the highest level, especially earlier in their careers, tend to compete almost monthly. And of course, there are some exceptions to the rule. When you have guys like Bouchesha who can compete once a year and destroy everyone, or Hodger Gracie who can come back and defeat Bouchesha after years off. But I feel as though the exception should not be the factor. And if looking at who has remained the most active during this time, both Lovato and Gilbert have done just that. With Lovato having a handful of more grappling matches, but Gilbert having more MMA fights, meaning he would stay in top physical shape all year round. So as far as activity, 
I don't feel like either has a huge advantage over the other here. So based on this analysis on paper, and using the five elements listed, it looks as though Lovato has a slight edge and could be considered the favorite against Gilbert Burns. However, one thing that made Gilbert such a huge star in both careers has been his ability to take on, overcome, and adapt to all challenges. This truly is anyone's match to win, and in the end, the fans of grappling will be in for a treat on April 30th. Make sure to tune in and watch it go down live only on Flow Grappling.